what happens though, you know, so we've been talking about atoms, right? What happens, how about if we have something bigger? How about, uh, you know, a much larger thing, like a cat? What about a cat? With something like a cat. Cats can be pretty mischievous, right? They can seem to, it seems like they can break laws some of the time, certainly. What about, what about this law of physics? Um, so that's uh, a difficult thing to try and test, a difficult thing to think about. There's no point firing a cat at two slits, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, we would have noticed, if a cat can go through two cat flaps at once, we would have noticed. So that's, you know, we have to be, have to be cleverer than that. And so, there was a, a very clever thought experiment, uh, an idea for uh, an interesting experiment. It was cooked up by this guy called uh, Erwin Schrodinger here. <laughs> So Schrodinger thought to himself, can we find some way to look for these weird quantum effects with a cat? And so, to think about that, what he said was, let's do a crazy thought experiment. Let's just imagine we're doing a thought experiment. No one would ever actually try this, of course. It's completely, uh, it would be completely unethical. But, um, let's just, let's just uh, consider it as a thought experiment. What he was thinking was, let's imagine that we put a quantum two-slit experiment where we work with a single atom, put that into a box. Uh, and as well, we're going to need in there a bottle of poison. <laughs> and there's going to be, inside the same box, you might have guessed, there's going to be a cat in there, right? <laughs> Just, uh, just, uh, just imagination. contraption in there. Uh, so, so the scientist has got inside there a contraption, right? With the two-slit experiment, this, this quantum two-slit experiment with a single atom coming along towards a pair of very small slits. So these slits are the same kind of size as an atom themselves. And if the atom goes through the left slit, then this contraption is going to break the poison and kill the cat. Oh. <laughs> If the atom goes through the right slit, then the contraption doesn't break the poison. The cat survives. Hooray! Yeah, okay. So if, uh, if these weren't atoms, if this was all simple, then we can imagine what would happen, right? There's, there'd be a 50-50 chance of the cat being alive or dead. Uh, but these are atoms. Yeah, so like, oops. Yeah. So I was telling you, uh, you know, atoms try out going through both slits at the same time, and so, you know, it's confusing. What's going to happen? You know, can a cat be alive and dead at the same time? So no, 
And if a cat is alive, a cat cannot be alive and dead at the same time. A cat is either alive or dead, as we're used to from our everyday lives. Um, and if you want to understand that a bit more, think about what I was saying about the special detector that goes in there to see which slit the atom went through, right? So for this dangerous, poisonous contraption to work, there must be something which actually looks at which slit the atom went through, and then, if that's the case, we go back to the, uh, to the picture that, uh, that, that, to these black dots, we go back to the simple case of, uh, of the atom either going through one slit or the other, and not being in, in this quantum superposition. And so, that's kind of how we get back to the world that we know. That's, uh, you know, how come we don't experience these weird quantum effects all around us. So, you know, that's the sort of a way of explaining it. At the same time, it's a, it's a top, this is a topic of active research. This is something that I'm doing experiments on, actually, at the moment. You know, how small is small? So, atoms do these strange things. What about somewhat larger things? At what stage does, does an atom get big enough, you know, at what stage do you have enough atoms together that, that you lose these quantum effects? And so here in Warwick, you know, we're doing experiments to try and probe this this uh, confusing aspect of quantum theory, this boundary between the small and the not so small. And so it's, uh, yeah, it's a fascinating active field of research for us.